So, welcome back for the second lecture of this week. So, we had started the formulation of topic models in the in the last lecture. So, but we mainly focused on the basic intuitions. So, today we will do the so mathematical formulation of uh, latent digital allocation. So, that is the main uh, sort of topic models that I used, also known as LDA. So, so we were here and we were saying that what is the central problem problem of LDA. So, problem we were saying was that we we have observing only the documents, but we know nothing about all the parameters of my generative model. So, I do not know what are my topic, uh, what are my topics, what are the topic proportion for the document and I do not know what is the per document or per, per word topic assignment, I do not know that. So, my real problem is from my observation, I want to reverse the gener generative model and come up with all these probabilities. So, uh, so yeah, so this figure will uh, will help in understanding this goal. So, remember we saw an earlier figure where we had all these topics given to us, we knew what are the proportion topic proportion for this document and then we were drawing topic for each word in this document. But now, so in, in reality I will only have the all the documents. So, I know all these documents, so I know what are the words, but I do not know anything about what are my topics, what are these proportions and what are these topic assignments for individual word. So, I have to compute the distribution conditioned on all the documents that I am seeing in my data. So, uh, another simple example to understand the intuition behind the generative model. So, here you have some 37,000 text passages from some educational material. And suppose you run LDA, you found roughly 300 topics. So, here in this slide what you are seeing? You are seeing four different topics. So, you are having a topic like 247, which has word like drugs, drug, medicine, effects, body, etcetera. Another topic having words like red, blue, green, yellow, white. Another word about mind, thought, remember, memory, thinking and another topic about doctor, patient, hospital, here and so on. So, these are four of the topics that, that are there in the corpus by running LDA over these 37,000 text passages. Now, to, to get intuition about the generative model. So, what is the generative model? You have some topics. Now, how do you generate documents? You take some of these topics in, a, in some proportions and start generating words for that. Now, so, so, suppose you try that. So, suppose you take topic 247 and 5. Okay. So, so, suppose I give an equal probability of the first two topics. So, what kind of document you can generate? Okay, just think, see these topics. So, first topic is about drugs, medicine, person, marijuana, second and another topic is red, blue, green, colors. So, suppose I blend these two topics together. So, what kind of document can I generate? Okay. So, there can be some different sort of documents you can think of. So, one could be that someone who was taking lot of alcohol, marijuana and so on and it affected its color perception. So, suppose you want to document, generate a document like that, you will blend these two topics together and, and write that. Similarly, suppose you want to blend these two topics together. Okay. So, this topic is about mind, thought, member, memory, forgotten. Okay, and this is about doctor, medical, nurse, patients and so on. So, if you want to blend these two topics together, you will generate a document that says okay, someone who had suffered some sort of memory loss and it led to visit of the doctor. Okay. So, like that you are having different topics, you can blend some of these topics and generate doc documents. So, this is a generative view. Okay. So, we can give equal probability to the first two topics that give some sort of documents and equal probability to the last two topics that give me another sort of document. So, now this, sim this single picture explains both the, the, the parts, the generative part and the inference part together. So, what you are seeing in the left figure, so this is the generative model. So, you are generating some documents and how are you doing that? So, you are having some topics, suppose you are having two topics, topic 1, topic 2. Each topic is nothing but a distribution over words. So, you are having some words like bank, loan, bank, money, loan. Okay. So, these mean these words are 
coming multiple times here. So, these words are having high probability. On the other hand, se second topic is river, stream, bank, river, so on. So, these are two topics. Now, using these two topics, I am trying to generate my documents. So, how can I generate the documents? I will mix these topics. So, suppose I only take topic 1 and I can have a gen document that contains words like money, bank, loan and so on. I can just take topic 2 and generate words like river, bank, stream and so on, but I may also take both these topics in say, say equal proportion and generate a document like money, bank, river, loan, stream, bank, money. So, what you are seeing here in this document 2, the words are labeled with topic 1 as well as 2, because the words could have come from either topic. On the other hand, in document 1, all the words are labeled with topic 1, doc 3 also all the words are labeled with topic 2, because these are the only topics possible in these documents. So, this is my generative model idea. So, you have everything here, you have the topics, you have per document topic proportions and you also have per document per word topic assignment. So, you know the topics for each individual word also. Now, what is the statistical, inf statistical inference part? So, inference part you only know your three documents. So, you know my doc 1 contains these words, doc 2 contains these words, doc 3 contains these words, excuse me. But you do not know what are your topics and you do not know what are the uh, proportion of various topics that are present in each document. So, all these numbers you do not know and you also do not know for each word what is the topic assignment and all this you have to infer. So, I hope by with this figure this clear what do I mean my generative model and what is my problem that is to infer all these probabilities of my generative model only from my observation. So, now important points about LDA. So, first of all it uses a bag of words assumption. So, I hope by now you understand what is a bag of words assumption that is I am not looking at the order in which the words occur. So, this is like a bag for me. So, I am taking all the words and putting them in, in, a, in a set. It is not like a list where some order is important. So, LD does not model the word order as such. So, it takes only what are the words present in any order. Second, and I guess you would have also noticed that in the previous uh, example, LDH are also good at capturing polysemy. So, remember what is polysemy? Polysemy is a given word might have multiple senses. So, in the case of topic models, what can I translate that? That means, the same word might correspond to multiple topics and this is perfectly allowed, because each topic can have its own probability distribution. So, that means, the same word can come in two different topics also. I remember in the previous slide, we are having the word like bank that was coming in both the topics and that is perfectly allowed. So, that way topic models can capture whether this word is coming from topic 1 or topic 2 in its different senses. So, the way the model is defined there is no notion of the words being mutually exclusive to the topics. Okay. So, for example, money and river can give high probability to the word. So, both money and river topics can have high probability for the word bank and that is perfectly fine. Now, to understand the LDA model. So, what is the LDA model? So, we have to first see what is the graphical notation. Okay. So, if you have not gone through some of these graphical notations, so this slide tries to explain how do you interpret graphical notations. So, here what you are seeing, I am having some variables. So, having a variable y and some variables x 1 to x n. So, uh, all these nodes when that I see in my graphical uh, model, these are random variables. So, I have a random variable y x 1 to x n. Now, what are these edges? These edges will denote the possible dependence. So, here I know that x 1 depends on y, x 2 depends on y and x n also. So, up to x n all these depend only on y, but they do not depend on each other. So, that is why there is no edge from x 2 to x 1 or x 1 to x 2. So, these depend only on y. Then there is a difference that some are shaded, some are not. So, what is that? So, observes, observed variables are shaded. So, that means these are the variables that I am observing and this is a hidden variable that is not shaded. And to simplify these notations, what we can use? We can also group 
some variables together. So, some instructions that is being repeated you can put it in a plate notation. So, this is you are seeing in the in the right hand side. So, you are having these n different variables and you can group them together by x n and you write here capital N that means x n is repeated capital N times. So, this and these are equivalent and this further simplifies this notation. Okay. So, once we have seen this, so how do we interpret graphical notations? Then we can look at look at the graphical notation for LD. So, what is the so so okay, just one more thing that once we have this notation, we can also compute the the probabilities of this uh, the whole graphical structure. So, I have variables y, x1 to x n. So, the probability would be I have the probability of y and each of these depend only on y. So, the probability of this whole structure can be probability of y times probability of x 1 given y, x 2 given y up to x n given y. So, so this graphical uh, the, the, the structure of my graph also defines what are the conditional dependence between various variables and that I can use to write my uh, joint probability distribution. Okay. So, this is my joint probability distribution over all these variables. So, now let us see what is the graphical model for LD. So, now, so you know uh, from the previous slide how to interpret graphical model. So, all these nodes are random variables and observed variables are shaded. Okay. So, the only shaded part is uh, W d n, these are my observed words. Everything else is hidden. Now, what are everything else? So, there are some plates here. So, let us see this one capital K and what are these topics. So, what I am saying here there are capital K different topics and each topic is a probability distribution. Okay. So, this is the probability distribution over top over different words for a given topic for a topic small k. Okay. So, beta k is what is the probability of word 1, what is the probability of word 2 etcetera for the topic k and this I am doing for all the capital K topics. Then let us look at this part. So, I have capital D different documents in my collection. So, for a given document small d, I have theta d variable that denotes per document topic proportions. So, for this document small d, what are the proportions in which you are blending different topics together. So, this will be different for different different documents. So, you are having capital D different documents and there is again a digital parameter here and a topic hyperparameter here. So, we will dis discuss what are these, uh, but right now you can understand by simply this beta k is the distribution over words for a given topic and theta d is a distribution over topics for a given document. Now, let us go inside. So, here now we are going to one particular document and this can have capital N words and what are these? So, you are having per word topic assignment z d n yes each word will have only one topic and this is the actual word that you are observing and these are all hidden. So, I do not know what my beta is, I do not know my theta, I do not know my z d n. So, this is only to explain what are my uh, what is what are different nodes here, what are the different plates here. So, you have plates corresponding to topics, documents as well as the words in a single document and you have all the variables that we were uh, using earlier all the, the notions that we were using earlier there are variables for each of these. Now, let us see how what is the actual generative model how do you generate the, the words using this structure. So, what is the generative model? So, firstly you draw each topic beta i as per the Dirichlet hyperparameter eta okay. and you do that for all the k topics. So, first of all in this generative model you are drawing drawing your topics. Okay. So, fine I have my capital K topics. Now, now you go to your documents. So, for each document that is small d draw topic proportions. So, you find out what are the topics that are involved in this document as a Dirichlet distribution over alpha. So, we will talk about these Dirichlet distributions what what do I mean by this Dirichlet distributions. So, you draw a topic, topic proportion okay. and then for each word a 
in my observation. So, for I am go now going to this document for each word you draw z d n as a from a multinomial distribution over theta d and draw a word from this. Uh, so, draw a topic and then draw a word from this multinomial distribution over beta z d n. Now, yeah, let us try to understand this a bit more. So, let us go one by one. Draw each topic beta i which is a Richler distribution over eta. So, uh, so what I am doing here, I have k different topics. So, I am trying to draw the proportions, the, the probability distributions from my uh, vocabulary. So, what I am saying, so okay, I have k different topics, topic t 1, t 2, t 3 up to t k. For each topic, I am drawing beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 and beta capital K. And what are these? They are nothing but the probability distribution over my uh, words in my vocabulary. So, it can be something like yeah, this is 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.05 so on. This can be 0, 0 0.1. So, these distributions are drawn by using a distillate over eta. So, it is a distribution over distributions. So, it helps you decide what kind of distribution will you prefer over another. So, that we will again discuss. So, this we will discuss later, but the idea is which kind of distribution you will prefer and this helps you draw some distributions for all the k topics. Okay. Now, so this we have drawn. Now, the next line says for each document draw tropic proportions theta d using Dirichlet over alpha. So, now these are your topics, but in your collection you have again capital D documents. So, document uh, 1, 2, small d capital D. So, they are capital D documents in your collection. Now, what is it, what are you drawing for each document? You are drawing theta d. What is theta d? Theta d is a probability distribution over the topics. So, it will be something like okay, what is the probability of topic 1, what is the probability of topic 2, what is the probability up to topic capital K. So, for each document you are drawing these distributions and what are theta d? Theta d are coming from Dirichlet over alpha. So, again this alpha is telling me what kind of topic distributions will I prefer over others. So, these are my so first drawing the topics then drawing the topic proportion for the documents. Now, what else? Now, it says now suppose I am going to this document then for each word how do you generate words? Draw z d n as a from a multinomial over theta d. So, theta d is a probability distribution and it is a multinomial distribution from there sample one topic. Okay. So, this is a distribution of k topics. Suppose z d n is equal to 5 that is I am taking topic 5. So, for each word I will draw one. So, it can be whatever that that comes according to this multinomial distribution. Suppose this is 5. Now, how do I generate the word now? I know the topic. Now, I have to generate a word. So, I go to, so it says draw w d n from multinomial of beta z d n. What is z d n? Now, z d n now is my 5 that is the topic you that you draw and now you take multinomial over beta 5. So, that means for beta 5 fifth topic I will find out what is the, so I will have the distribution and from there I will sample one word. So, I will sample a word from this probability distribution and that is what I am generating. So, this you will do for each of the capital N words in my document and this is the whole generative model. First you are generating your topics then for each document topic proportions, then you going to the individual topic, going to the individual word and generating that word. Okay. Fine. 
that is what we were saying in this slide. Now, so one interesting point here is why do we name it as latent distillate allocation? Okay, so we are doing some allocation, but why latent and distillate coming? So, uh, so latent in this uh, LDA same has the same thing as in latent semantic indexing. So that is, all these topics are some some sort of latent variables. Okay, so there are some sort of hidden topics, some latent topics. I do not know what are these topics as such. I cannot give them a good maybe good labels also. But there are some distributions, some hidden distributions over my words, and these are called latent. Then what is Dirichlet here? So you you saw the Dirichlet distribution at two places. So that is the distribution that is used to draw the per document topic distributions is a Dirichlet distribution. Okay, so that is how am I sampling topics for a given do document that is coming from a Dirichlet distribution? And this result is used to allocate the words of the documents to different topics, and that's where the word allocation is also coming. Okay, so you are having latent Dirichlet and allocation. So now we will look at this Dirichlet part a bit more in bit more detail. So what are the Dirichlet distributions? So if you uh, think about it, so so if you intuitively try to understand that this is a distribution over probability distributions. Okay, what do I mean by that? So the Dirichlet distribution is an exponential family distribution over the simplex that is the positive positive vectors that sum to one. Okay. So when I talk about simplex, so you can talk about say one simplex. One simplex would be two elements, say x one, x two, such that x one plus x two is equal to 1, positive vectors that add up to 1. This is one simplex. So, you can see that there are infinite solutions here okay? and you can treat it as a line. It is a line and this might correspond to say 0, 1, this might be uh, 1, 0. So, that is topic 1 has 0, topic 2 is or yeah, x 1 is 0, x 2 is 1, here x 1 is 1, x 2 is 0. And any point you can accordingly give some definition, what are the values of x 1, x 2. Okay. So, you can see that this will be a line, simple line x 1 plus x 2 is equal to 1, this may be 1 simplex. Then you can have 2 simplex. So, then you are having 3 things x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3, they are at 1. Okay, and this would be some sort of triangle. Okay. So, this point might correspond to say x 1 is 1, x 2 is 0, x 3 is 0. This might be x 1 is 0, x 2 is 1, x 3 is 0. This might be 0, 0, 1. And then each point will have some proportions such that all 3 add up to 1. This is my 2 simplex like that you can define of any n simplex. So, if you are having k topics, you can think of it as k minus 1 simplex. Okay. So, now what is my digital distribution? So, so now we are saying it is an exponential family distribution over the simplex that is the positive vectors that add up to 1. So, again let us try to understand that intuitively first. So, what I am I am saying here suppose I am having a 2 simplex then lot of different values by 3 uh, x 1, x 2, x 3 they can take, they can take a lot of different values. So, I can take values like 1, 0, 0, I can take values like 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.34 and things like that. They can take a different values like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 etcetera. So, what my digital distribution does? it gives me a probability of this probability distribution. So, what is the probability of getting a distribution like this? What is the probability of getting a distribution like this? Okay. So, that is what kind of distributions I will prefer. 
So, I can use that to say that I will prefer distributions where one topic one of the topics has a high probability and others have very low probability or I will like to have a distribution where all the topics have equal probability. So, these kind of constraints you can put by using your alpha. Okay. So, that is where the formulation is. So, what is the probability of theta that is a distribution over these uh, topics given my alpha that is some gamma function. So, even if we forget about this term, so this is multiplication over theta i to the power alpha i minus 1. Okay. So, let us look at this term only. So, uh, what is being said here? So, probability theta given alpha is multiplication over theta i to the power alpha i minus 1. Okay. So, let us try to understand that. Suppose my alpha i is say point 0.1 versus alpha i is equal to say 2. What would happen in the two cases? And let us say I took look at two different thetas. So, my theta 1 is 0 0.98, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Okay. One topic has a high probability, others have roughly 0 and theta 2 is say point 0.33, And now, you can see what kind of alpha will prefer one theta over another one. So, let us take the case with 0 0.1, alpha is 0 0.1. So, what will be the probability of this getting this distribution? It will be uh, 0 0.98 to the power minus 0 0.9, 0 0.01 to the power minus 0 0.9, 0 0.01 to the power minus 0 0.9. Okay. And this probability would be same 0 0.3 to the power minus 0 0.9, 0 0.33 to the power minus 0 0.9 and so on. On the other hand, if I take alpha is equal to 2, then this would be 0.98 times. So, alpha i minus 1 will become, become 1, so the power is 1, 0 0.01 times 0 0.01 and this will become 0.33 times 0.33 times 0.33. Now, what is your observation here? So, one thing we see it that if you uh, take alpha is equal to 2, if you take alpha is equal to 2, then the, the topics where, so the distribution where one topic is having very small probability will get a overall very small probability, right. You are multiplying 0 0.98 by 0 0.01 times 0 0.01, this will become very small. On the end, this will be okay. This is like 1 by 3 times 1 by 3 times 1 by 3. So, as you increase alpha, it will prefer to have topics or, or the distributions where each topic proba probability is roughly equal. Okay. So, it will prefer this one. But if you are having a smaller alpha, then what you are seeing? So, now 0 0.01 to the power 0.9, this will be now can be written as uh, 100 to the power 0.9. Okay, so, these will become very large and this will be roughly, this will not be large. Okay. So, so, what will happen as your alpha becomes small, they will prefer the probability distribution where one topic is having high probability and others are having low probability. So, by tuning your alpha, you can prefer one topic probability, one sort of distribution over other distribution. So, so this is my Dirichlet distribution. So now again to give you some visualization. So here are two different sort of simplex. Uh, so alpha, as such, you can interpret as some prior observation count on the number of 
times a topic j is sampled individual alpha j. So, that is how many times this topic will be sampled, but so, so and you can also think of as some forces and higher alpha will move the topics away from the corner of the simplex. So, let me come back to this point again. So, you are saying two different simplex, one where uh, the topics are moved away from the, the corners, okay, these are being moved away and here you are going towards the corners and this is for because of higher values of alpha and we will come back to this again. So, now when alpha is less than 1, there is a bias to big topic distributions favoring just a few topics and this is what we saw just now on paper that when alpha is equal to is less than 1, it tends to prefer the distributions where only a few topics has a high probability and others have lower probability. Now, while in general you can take different alphas for your different topics, what is convenient is that you take all alphas to be rough to be the same. So, you have a single hyperparameter alpha. So, alpha all alphas are same. Now, what matters now is what is the value of this alpha. Okay. So, the relatively they are the same all alpha 1 to alpha uh, alpha capital D all for all the documents they are the same uh, sorry alpha 1 to alpha capital K they are same, but uh, what is the relative number is it like what is the number is it like 0.1, 2, 5 that will matter. So, now if alpha is small what will happen you will tend to prefer topics with uh, where, where sorry you will tend to prefer distributions where one topic will have a higher probability. So, remember how did we define simplex. So, in this case what this this boundary means. So, this colors denote what is the probability distributions. Okay. So, black means a high dis probability distribution and and so on and as you as the uh, as it diminishes. So, the, the color becomes so, fade it then you are seeing that the, the probability is decreasing. So, in the left hand side figure the probability is mostly centered for in the in the in the center of the simplex, while in the right hand side it is moving towards the corners. Okay. So, that you can interpret as if in this simplex whenever all three topics have the same weight it is given a higher probability here even if one topic is having in, in more proportion than others it is getting a high probability. So, this is now moving away from the center of the simplex. So, it is going towards the corner. So, if you go to the corner that means one topic has the high probability other two have the small probability. Okay. So, this is favoring also to have topics where oh sorry also to have distributions where one topic has high probability than others while this will favor the distributions where all three topics have roughly equal probability. Okay. So, now you can easily tell which one is corresponding to higher alpha or lower alpha. So, the one that corresponds to lower alpha will be like that. It will favor distributions where one topic is having a high probability than others. Now, this is some, uh, some uh, from simulation what happens if you take different values of alpha. So, if you take alpha is equal to 1, what kind of distributions are preferred? So, there are 15 documents here that are being shown and there are 10 different topics. So, you see the distributions are ok. So, you are having some distribution for topic T 2, T 3 and so on. For these 15 documents they are different different distributions, but suppose you try to now increase the value of alpha as you go to 10. So, as you increase the value of alpha it will start favoring those distributions where all the topics have roughly same probability. You see now this is getting flattened. So, you are having you are now seeing all the topics and if you try to al increase alpha to 100 you will see all the topics have same probability and this is not something that you will anyway desire. So, it is not good that each document has all the topics in same probability then it the topic model does not make any sense. So, alpha is equal to 1 was looking ok. So, so this kind of distribution we would like, but now suppose I want to, I want to decrease the value of alpha. 
suppose I go from 1 to point 0.1. Now, what you are seeing? It will start favoring the distributions where one topic has a high probability or one or maybe two. Okay. But suppose I increase I decrease it further to 0 0.01. So, most of the topics have probability 0, only one topic comes as a probability 1, or here two topics are coming. If you further reduce this value to 0 0.01, you will get only one topic in each document. So, that will give you some idea of how if you modify or change this parameter alpha, how does this affect the overall topic distribution in, in my corpus? Okay. Certain kind of distributions will get preference over others. Now, for LDA, there are a lot of implementations that are available. So, uh, and these are like very, very popular. You can also use implementations that are available in Jensen. So, now so, we are again, so we have discussed only the generative part, in but now in full details that how do we, what is the generative model of LD. But remember what is my problem, how do we infer all these probabilities. So, that is I am given a collection of documents and I want to infer per document topic assignment Z d n, per document topic distributions theta d and per corpus topic distributions beta k. I want to infer all this. Now, once I am able to infer all this, I can use this to find out let us say to use to for information retrieval, document similarity and many other tasks. But the question is once I am given these observations of the, of the words, how do I infer all these uh, probability values. Uh, so, so, there are different ways of doing that. So, we will discuss about one such method in the next lecture.